Welcome everyone, a new episode of Africa Today and our main topic is going to be about the African airports and three of the Egyptian airports are included into the best 10 African airports and the announcement came by the Airports Council International and um, this is going to be our main topic. We are going to start with uh, this detailed report about this issue and we are going to return back so stay tuned. Egyptian airports have made a great achievement on the level of the African continent in passenger traffic and air cargo as Cairo International Airport and two other Egyptian airports topped the list issued by the Airport Council International ACI for the first 10 African airports in terms of passenger traffic in 2021. Cairo Airport also came in second place in cargo traffic while Hurghada Airport ranked fifth and Sharm Sheikh Airport came in eighth place among the top 10 African airports in terms of the number of passengers according to the statistics of the Airports Council International. Minister of Civil Aviation Mohamed Monar congratulated all workers in the aviation sector for the achievement expressing his appreciation for their great efforts despite the difficult conditions experienced by the air transport industry due to the coronavirus pandemic. Manor pointed out that the Egyptian airports network is witnessing a great development with new airports being constructed and old ones being modernized, besides strengthening the security and safety systems at all airports, developing the cargo village and modernizing the air cargo fleet. 11 Egyptian airports obtained and renewed the Certificate of Safe Health Travel from the Airports Council International, which contributed to increasing tourist traffic to Egypt and strengthening its position on the map of the world's favorite tourist destinations. Cairo Airport ranked first in Africa in terms of passenger numbers, with 11.3 million passengers exceeding the number of passengers of the airports of South Africa, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Morocco, and Kenya, while Hurghada Airport came in the fifth place with 4.9 million passengers, and Sharm Sheikh Airport ranked eighth on the list with almost 4.6 million passengers. And to continue with our reports, and this time it's about climate change. And the latest research made and studies made by Egypt said that the African continent was hit hard by the climate change issue. And um, uh, Egypt calls for um, investing more and more in the renewable energy resources to save not only the black continent, but the whole world. Let's watch and we are going to be back with more. Egypt affirmed that the African continent is the most affected by climate change, calling for increased investments in clean and renewable energy and the reduction of harmful carbon emissions to face climate challenges in the countries of the continent. The Egyptian Red Sea Resort of Sharm Sheikh will host the 27th session of the Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, COP27, from 7th to 18th of November. Dr. Mahmoud Mohideen, climate pioneer for the Egyptian presidency of the COP27 Climate Conference, said that although Africa contributes a small percentage to the total global harmful emissions, he warned that Africa is the most affected by the repercussions of climate change, which contributes to achieving the desired development and climate goals in his speech during the activities of the Road to COP27, African Regional Forum on Climate Initiatives, Climate Action Financing and Sustainable Development Goals Forum, which concludes Thursday in Addis Ababa, he added that Africa needs more efforts to advance the climate action agenda. Well, with our last report regarding a UN expert who said that the armed groups in the Central African Republic must lay down their arms and engage in political dialogue, urging the international community to strengthen efforts to restore state authority and to end all the violence that erupted in the country. AUN human rights experts urged rebels in the war-torn Central African Republic to lay down their arms and engage in a political dialogue. One of the world's poorest countries, the CAR, has been torn apart by civil war for much of the past nine years. In late 2020, the most powerful among rebel groups, then controlling two-thirds of the country, formed the Coalition of Patriots for Change and tried to oust President 
Arkanj Chudara by launching an offensive on the capital, Bangui. The army managed to repel the attack with alleged help from Russia mercenaries, but the Central African government still struggles to establish its authority in many areas of the vast nation. After a 10-day visit of the country, he painted a grim picture of the state of human rights in the country. He alleged the Central African National Army and the internal security forces and their auxiliaries had carried out unacceptable human rights violations in an attack on the village of Boyo in December last year. A UN report last month accused government forces and foreign private military contractors of training the militias behind possible war crimes and crimes against humanity in Boyo. Welcome back, and uh, we are going to continue with our African news and uh, with uh, the most important events that are taking place uh, in uh, our continent. And uh, to shed more light on this and uh, to uh, uh, continue with analyzing uh, the major African events or news, we are very much delighted to have with us phone Ambassador Saad Shalabi, former Assistant Foreign Minister. A very good afternoon to you, Ambassador Saad. Good afternoon. And let's start with this choice of uh, three of the Egyptian airports among the best 10 uh, African airports with uh, the major leap in developing our infrastructure, with uh, sending a message to Africa that we are back to our strategic depth to the black continent. How do you see this? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, of course. Uh, the, uh, the Cairo airport is one of the... Uh, uh, best airports in Africa and uh, the Cairo International Airport is uh, regarded as uh, maybe the first or the second in Africa. So um, uh, we are very happy that uh, we were chosen to be uh, Africa's um, best uh, airport terminal. And um, it is, uh, of course, um, very busy all the year and it uh, receives uh, planes from all over the world and it is uh, ranked uh, very highly among other um, airports. Uh, never uh, we had a problem uh, you know, whether it is aviation or uh, uh, congestion or even uh, the last problem was uh, with the luggage um, 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 problem that is uh, happened that has happened in Europe. It did not affect uh, Cairo Airport. Yes, and uh, of course this is uh, just a start and um, uh, we were uh, very happy to, uh, to say that despite the um, um, global negative repercussions of COVID-19 and of the um, uh, Ukrainian-Russian struggle, we are on the right track developing our uh, infrastructure. Uh, but um, if you permit me, I'd like to go to another African story, which is the uh, tour of um, a U.S. Secretary um, of State, Anthony Blinken, uh, to uh, three African nations. And it started today with South Africa. It just came after uh, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov had a similar tour in the black continent. Uh, do you think that the West learned the lesson and they now knew well that uh, Africa and the African uh, big states uh, can play such a big role in the global policies? Of course, um, uh, this, uh, this is uh, one of the things that um, the United States have started uh, to uh, re recognize the role of Africa uh, in the international affairs of the world and um, it has even uh, declared that uh, it will be uh, mediating again between Egypt and Ethiopia uh, and Sudan uh, in regard to the uh, dam that uh, is causing the problem. Um, and uh, um, the, the, the tour that is happening now is another uh, attempt to, um, to, to raise the the voices of Africa um, between the United States and Africa because uh, the Africans have suffered a lot uh, because of the, from the uh, war in, uh, between uh, Russia and Ukraine and, and before that it has suffered from the COVID. Uh, so 
the United States had to play a role in order to uh, link uh, the, its uh, strategy to the African continent because it, it comprises of 54 countries that are all uh, very vibrant and very important uh, in the uh, in the international arena. So uh, this uh, tour, of course, um, is uh, a response to the uh, tour that made was made by Lavrov, the Russian um, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, who. Uh, declared that um, um, Africa is important for Russia and that um, he, uh, they always uh, invite the uh, Russian, the African leaders to Russia in order to co continue the link between um, its policies and the, Russia and the African continent. And the, uh, actually the Russians have a very big... Uh, um, investment uh, opportunities in Africa. They have um, much more interest in Africa than the United States mm -hmm. compared to um, this, uh, compared to the um, investments that um, that uh, the United States is doing in Asia, for instance. So. Yes. And uh, to continue with what you're saying, um, Ambassador Shalabi, um, Foreign Minister, um, sorry, um, Blinken, the American uh, Secretary of State, uh, likened what happened or the war against apartheid or racial discrimination in South Africa as, uh, um, as the same battle in the United States, only as an example that we are all human beings and whenever uh, there is a problem, it's the same here or there. We all share the same destiny, the same fate, meaning that um, uh, the foreign relations between both continents, let's say, is going to be built on mutual respect and win-win situation policy, if you agree with me on that. Yes, of course, uh, I agree. And uh, the United States is suffering a lot from... Uh, the uh, discrimination policies that has been uh, adopted a uh, long time ago and until now uh, the the black Afri the black um, americans are already suffering even uh, during obama's uh, um, time yeah it was uh, it was um, it, it, it is a problem that they have to face and uh, when they visit south africa and they see how how the africans are dealing with um, uh, their problems and how they uh, they have, um, uh, the, the, especially South Africa, they have uh, de dealt with the problem of discrimination and and now they have their own uh, independence and the rule, uh, the black rule uh, ruling. Um, it is uh, a completely uh, switch between uh, the, their their life before and the life now. Yeah. So the, the, there has to be support. We, uh, the, I mean, the, all the international community have to support the the um, the South African um, uh, struggle to become uh, independent and to become uh, uh, um, to to have the equal rights for the blacks uh, in uh, in South Africa and in other other countries also. Who saw, uh, who used to be colonized by by um, the French or the Germans or the uh, British. Italian, um, Portuguese, you name it. Uh, Portuguese, Ambassador, yes. Uh, Ambassador yes. Shalabi, uh, the, um, <clears throat> bigger pardon, the American top diplomat is going also to visit Congo and Rwanda in his uh, uh, African tour. And among the top issues, um, he and his office announced uh, in, uh, um, to be uh, on the agenda of talks is going to be climate change also. In the light of Egypt hosting COP27, this is another sign saying that Egypt all the time is a pioneer and Egypt all the time is going to be involved into uh, uh, discussing climate change in preparations for the coming COP27. How do you see this? Uh, of course, uh, Africa is very important. The presence of Africa in COP27 is going to be very important. And Egypt has started from now to launch uh, its, uh, all, the, all the possibilities and the uh, uh, attention. Uh, um, the, they, they shed a lot of light on the importance 
of uh, having uh, financial um, support for the African countries who are suffering from um, the, um, uh, the, the um, difficulties that are faced by the um, uh, climate change that is happening in Europe and in the West. And uh, wh wh while um, Africa is, is not producing any uh, problems to uh, the West, but the West are sending all the, the uh, difficulties of the climate change, the dryness of the weather and the hot uh, climate that we, that we are all suffering from and the, and the loss of um, agricultural uh, products and uh, all these are, we are suffering be because of their industries and their um, uh, change of climate that is um, affecting our uh, natural uh, environment. And it's not a luxury habitat. anymore. We should all cooperate together and coordinate our efforts to save humanity, to save the, the exactly. planet for the and coming generations. Why, yes. Yeah, that is why Egypt is asking all the West countries and uh, those who are um, producing those uh, emissions, uh, bad, bad emissions, to uh, help finance the projects, the green uh, projects that. To, to have a green economy for all African countries. Uh, to in diversify order to our renewable diversity. energy resources. Yeah, yes, exactly. exactly. Very well said, uh, Ambassador exactly. Sohak Shalabi, former Assistant Foreign Minister. Thank you very much for your input. You are always an added value to our programs. Have a very good afternoon. And by this, we come to the end of Africa Today, this episode. But tomorrow, is um, we are going to be meeting again. Many thanks for watching. This was Nirmin Abdurrahman.